Hello. Hello. Is it audible? Am I audible? Can it reach the last row? My voice or not? Ochigi? Is it? I don't think so. They are not able to hear, no? I don't no, use it. No, no. Don't use that. But this should work. Then why should it work? No, actually, this is for the online. Oh. Yeah. This is for the right. Okay, uh, then give me that. Still come up. No. Have a hand to your phone. Or if you want, you can give it to me. No, not a problem. Uh, actually, we need to get more the mic. Both of them. <laughs> this is for the online. So, shall we start? Yes. Okay. So, good afternoon, all of you. The afternoon sessions are very challenging session. They are called graveyard sessions because after a good meal, your Madhya Pradesh is full and therefore the Uttar Pradesh goes to sleep. So, that is what happens in the afternoon, but the afternoon also we have life and uh, life goes on and therefore we will be talking about a subject which is generally regarded as a very dry subject, ethics and value. But I shall try to make it as interesting as possible and today I will not be talking about too much about the concepts, it will be more of experiential learning. So, I shall be mostly doing the storytelling and trying to explain the concepts of ethics and values through those stories. Okay? So, what happened was that once Shiva Khela, you must have heard the name of Shiva Khela. Who is he? Yeah. So, he is an author and he is a motivational speaker. So, Shiva Khela once went to Singapore. And when he got down from the plane, he hired a taxi. The name of the taxi driver was Henry. So, he told Henry to take him to a particular office in Singapore. Now, Henry did not know the exact location of that office. He had a rough idea where that office was situated. So, on the way, they started talking about India and Singapore. And when the taxi reached a group of multi-storied buildings, where Henry presumed that the tax, that, that particular office was situated at that point. Even then, since he did not know the exact location, he had to take some extra rounds of those buildings, as a result of which extra kilometer was run and time was also taken much more. So, when ultimately the taxi stopped at that particular office and Shiv Khera got down, the taxi meter reading showed $11. So, he promptly took out $11 and he was about to hand over the money to Henry and Henry said, no sir, $10. So, Shiv Khera said, but your meter is showing $11. He said, sir, I am a taxi driver and I am expected to know each and every location in the city. That is my job as a taxi driver. And believe me, sir, if I had come straight away to this particular office, it would have actually cost you just $10. Because of my ignorance, you cannot be faulted. And sir, if I charge you $11, I would be committing one of the most unethical acts on this earth. And that too before a foreigner. You represent India and I represent Singapore. I may not be holding any diplomatic passport on behalf of the government of Singapore. And yet, I 
am an ambassador of my country. I would not like to be unethical before a foreigner. Shivakhila was amazed. He said back home in his country this would never have happened. And therefore, when he went and he addressed people, he narrated this incident far and wide. And he said that that taxi driver had a firm belief and conviction inside him which did not allow him to charge the $11. Now, this firm belief and conviction which is present in every one of you is called a value. So, value is a firm belief and conviction which is present in every one of us, all the human beings. Now, let us understand that what are the what was the value which that particular taxi driver was trying to portray before Shiv Khela? What was that value? Honesty. Absolutely correct. Honesty. So, honesty was a value which he was trying to display before Shiva Khela. There are hundreds of such values in this world which all of you possess and you use it also many a time. Now, can you give examples of some other values just like honesty? Integrity, hmm? discipline, hmm? pardon, truthfulness, absolutely right, hmm? selflessness, okay. So, these are the values. So, non-violence, truthfulness, discipline, integrity, forgiving others, seeking forgiveness, all these are values, empathy, sympathy, compassion. And they are present in ourselves to some degree or the other. Now, let us understand the difference between values and ethics. These are the values which are the firm belief and conviction inside you. When these values are in action in this world, then only they become ethics. Now, unless and until you start using these values in your day-to-day -day dealing or interacting with other human beings, it will not become ethics. If that taxi driver had kept the principle of honesty inside him, he would not have used it vis-a-vis Shiv Kela, it would not become ethics. So, ethics is the relationship or in the interaction between one human being and another human being on the basis of the value. So, value is something between you and the Almighty and ethics is something between you and all other human beings in this world. So, the play of values in this world is called ethics or when the values are in action, they are called ethics. Value is the cause, ethics is the effect. If there is a tree, the roots of the tree are values. The stronger the roots, the stronger will be the tree. So, the stronger value system you possess, you will be very, very ethical in your dealings. So, if you start using these values on a day-to-day -day basis while interacting with your stakeholders, then you are believed to be moving on an ethical path. Now, who are the stakeholders that you meet day-to-day -day basis? At your, in your family and also wherever. Yeah, so who are the stakeholders? Hmm? Hmm? Pardon? Okay, people of India, yes, but, but specifically some of the stakeholders which are very close to you, which you deal to them on a fan. So, your parents, your friends, your teachers, your principal, your domestic servants, your taxi driver, your, you know, all these people whom you interact day to day basis, they are the stakeholders. Now, value is something always positive, it can never be negative. Value is always possible. But values sometimes do not come out of you. They remain hidden inside us. We don't use those values. And that remains hidden because of a three letter word in English. And what is that? Ego. Absolutely right. So, ego prevents that value thing to come out of you. And therefore, if you want to be on an ethical path, you should start Shedding that ego. Ego is nothing but I. Hindi mein kahe to usko kya kehte hai? Ahem. Main. So, the journey of ethics starts when you start moving from I to we. We means W-E. Main se hum ki or jo yatra hai, 
वो इथिकल यात्रा है वेन यू स्टार्ट थिंकिंग अबाउट ऑल द स्टेक होल्डर्स योर ब्रदर योर सिस्टर योर पेरेंट्स द पीपल हुम यू मीट देन यू आर ऑन एन एथिकल पाथ सो इट इज ए जर्नी फ्रॉम आई टू वी हिंदी में कहें अहम से हम की ओर जो यात्रा है वो एथिकल यात्रा है ओके नाउ देर इज अ वर्ड इन इंग्लिश विच स्टार्ट विद द लेटर आई एंड दैट इज कॉल्ड इलनेस बीमारी चेंज आई टू वी एंड वॉट डज इट बिकम वेलनेस इलनेस चेंजेस टू वेलनेस द मोमेंट यू चेंज फ्रॉम आई टू वी दैट इज द एथिकल पार्ट ओके सो ट्राई इफ यू वॉन्ट टू बी एथिकल ट्राई टू लिसन टू ऑल द पीपल using those values so honesty compassion empathy sympathy forgiving others all these things will help you becoming ethical more and more now that particular uh, taxi driver shiv khela said that probably he was not even educated beyond fourth class shayad chauthi jamaat ke beyond usne kaksha mein padha bhi nahi hoga and yet he possessed those values so shiv khela said that perhaps the ethics do not require education at all these are caught from different sources what are the sources from where you catch these ethics and values correct absolutely right family teachers friends peer group books religious books your uh, those people who are your idols you see so these are the things from where you catch ethics so that is why he said that ethics are caught and they need not be taught you catch them seeing your parents if the parents are ethical the chances of the children becoming ethical are very large and the converse is also true if the parents are unethical the chances of the children becoming unethical is also large so therefore you catch these ethics from different sources now when we talk about different sources one more source is there which is regarded as one of the most ethical entities on this earth and you observe it daily when you come out of your homes in the mornings or in the afternoons when you go out you observe it daily and this is regarded as one of the biggest ethical entity because it possesses all the values it has compassion it has empathy it has sympathy uh, it is forgiving can you name that nature nature so nature is something which possesses all the values you know it gives us oxygen it gives us food grains it gives us fruits it gives us vegetables it gives us shelter and does it ask anything in return no so ethics is giving without expectation in return if you do something good to other but you are expecting something out of it it is not ethics ethics means being good doing good to someone else your stakeholder without expectation in return coming to nature nature gives us oxygen now oxygen if you go to the market you have to purchase oxygen it doesn't come free of cost does it so therefore the oxygen which is actually valued in rupees and all of you understand the importance of oxygen we realized during the recent two years covid 19 we have we were gasping for breath and oxygen suddenly became so important so nature gives that oxygen to us free of cost without expectation in it can you give me a guesstimate or estimate how much oxygen does nature give to each one of us if we survive up to the age of 65 years 65 saal ki umar tak agar aap average age maan ke chaliye to nature kitne rupaye ki oxygen hum sabko muft deta hai without expectation any idea hmm scientists have calculated that because with every breath of air you get oxygen so they have multiplied it by the the amount of rate and they have found that every one of us we human beings get oxygen worth 5.5 crores of rupees sare 5 crore rupaye ki oxygen nature hum sabko muft deta hai agar hum 65 saal ki umar tak zinda rehte hain and if we survive more then naturally it is even more so that is only one thing it gives us fruits vegetables food grains shelter water so all these things are given by nature that is why nature is regarded as one of the biggest ethical entities so ethics is giving without expectation in return if a government servant does work of someone 
and takes bribe in return, money in return. It is not ethics. It is totally unethical. So that is why ethics and values assume a great importance in the context of government servants. And ethics paper GS4 talks about many subjects, including civil service ethics also. Now, as I was telling you that this particular nature is giving, but the other aspect is of ethics is taking also. Ethics is also taking because we get so many things from different sources. Parents, parents give us, your brother, your sister, everyone gives us so many things. But the important condition there in taking is it should be done with an attitude of gratitude. So ethics is taking also, but you must express gratitude. So the attitude of gratitude is associated with taking. So ethics is giving without expectation. Ethics is taking with an attitude of gratitude. Now, all of you might have heard a story. Uh, maybe, maybe in your school days you might have read it in English poetry. There was one poet poem by the name of Abu Ben Adam. Has anyone heard about Abu Ben Adam? No, no one. So, Abu Ben Adam is the name of a story, uh, a poem, written by Leigh Hunt, the poet, Leigh Hunt. If you Google, you will be able to find it quickly. So, Abu Ben Adam was a very noble man, very ethical man. He used to help others. He would stand 24-7 by the side of his neighbor and he would help him. So, one day, Abu Ben Adam was lying on his bed. And the window was open ajar and suddenly, you know, the, the moonlight was coming inside and suddenly he got up and he found that there was an angel writing in a book of gold sitting by his bed. On a chair, he saw a deva purush, a kursi par bathe hue, kisi pustak mein kuch likh rahe. So he was surprised. He said, who is this gentleman? So he said, what writest thou? So he raised his head, the angel in his white robe, he, he was sitting there, he raised his head and he said, I am writing the names of those people who love the Lord, who love God. So he said, is my name there? So the angel looked up at the list and he said, no, your name is not there. Abu Ben Adam was disappointed and yet cheerfully still, he said, even if my name is not there, in the list of those people who love the Lord, can you include my name in another list? A list of those people who love the countrymen and fellow men created by God. Jo aam nagarik, citizen, fellow men, countrymen, jo bhagwan ne banaya hai, unki madad kare. I try to be helpful to the people who have been created by God. So, can you write my name in another list who love the fellow men and the countrymen created by God? So, he wrote and disappeared. Next day, he again came, that angel, and he showed a list, the final list of those people whose love God had blessed. And lo and behold, Abu Ben Adam's name led all the rest. It was at number one. So those, the moral of the story was that those who help the citizen, the fellow men, the countrymen created by God, they are closest to the Lord. So this is precisely what his ethics is about. In our day-to-day -day dealings with other stakeholders, if we are trying to be giving as much as possible to the other, then we also become very close to God. Now, nature and human beings, there is a difference. A poet wrote beautiful lines. He said, nature gives and forgives. We commit so many excesses against nature and yet it forgives. We cut down the trees. We, we, we do mining activities in the mountains. We literally, we literally pollute the rivers and yet nature forgives us. So nature gives and forgives. And this is despite the fact that we Indians are very religious. We worship these things. We worship trees. We worship the rivers and we worship the mountains. And yet we pollute them maximum. So that author wrote, nature gives and forgives. And we human beings get and forget. So that's the difference. 
we get so many things from other people from parents from teachers and other and we forget very conveniently so that is the difference between nature and human beings now all of you would be familiar with the name of one of the very very great saints of this country who was not only known in this country but also the entire world that was guru nanak now guru nanak had two of his disciples who were very close to guru nanak what were the names of those two disciples hmm mardana and bala so bala and mardana were the two disciples very close to guru nanak so once as the story goes which is a real story guru nanak once went to a village along with his two disciples bala and mardana and this village consisted of only ethical people good people helpful people they would be very compassionate empathetic 24/7 truthfulness everything was there very ethical they had their food there in the evening and in the morning when they were about to leave the village guru nanak gave a curse to that village usse shap diya ujad jaye yah gaon let this village be disintegrated so bala and mardana were very surprised what has happened to gurudev they are all good people and he is giving a curse to these people but they didn't ask him they were afraid of asking many of you must have heard this story so next day they went to another village and that village consisted of only the unethical people so gunde mawali badmash lampat criminals they were inhabiting that village they also they are had their food there also next day they were about to leave the village and guru nanak gave a blessing to that village basa rahe yah gaon let this village remain intact now bala and mardana could not resist the temptation of asking gurudev why did you do that good people you are giving a curse bad people you are giving a blessing and then he explained he said that village consisting of good people if that disintegrates if it breaks down all the people will have to travel to different parts of the country someone will go to andhra someone to tamil nadu some to bihar some to jammu and kashmir some to gujarat and thereby the goodness and the ethics and values will also spread all over the country anyone who will come in contact with those people will also tend to be ethical and this is what i want i want that ethics and values should not remain confined in only one particular village of this country it should spread far and wide everyone should become ethical and the second village which was an unethical village i gave them a blessing yahi raho nikalna mat bahar yahan se nobody should come in contact with you because anyone will come in contact with you will also become unethical i don't want that so this is how he explained the thing now this ethics and values you know the it is propagated so those a group of ethical people if they spread out and all of you you know after passing the examination getting selected you will be posted at different places all over the country a civil servant for example gets posted all over the country and when they are posted at different places then through them the message of ethics and values spreads so government servants play a very important role in spreading the message of ethics and values because they meet so many people people come to the government servants for one reason or the other they are also commanding a group of people under this they are subordinates so if they are themselves ethical the subordinates and the people whom they meet will also tend to be ethical you know people come and meet us the government servants because of mainly three reasons and the three reasons are bhavavash abhavavash और प्रभाववश उनको हमारे प्रति श्रद्धा भाव है इसलिए आते हैं दे रिवियर अस भाववश अभाववश दे आर लैकिंग समथिंग किसी को ड्राइविंग लाइसेंस बनवाना है किसी को कुछ बनवाना है किसी को राशन कार्ड बनवाना है किसी को आधार बनवाना है अभाव है उस अभाव की पूर्ति के लिए आते हैं और प्रभाववश बिकॉज वी होल्ड रिस्पॉन्सिबल पोजिशन एंड देयर फोर वी एग्जर्ट ए सर्टन इन्फ्लुएंस ओवर एवरीथिंग सो प्रभाव है इसलिए वो आएंगे अब सब फॉर एग्जाम्पल स्टेशन हाउस ऑफिसर विल कॉल समन दैट फेलो विल हैव टू कम बिकॉज प्रभाव है तो दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग गवर्नमेंट सर्वेंट प्ले अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल इन एथिक्स एंड वैल्यूज एंड दैट इज वाई आई वुड अर्ज अपॉन ऑल ऑफ यू दैट टेक इट अपॉन एज ए चैलेंज दैट यू हैव टू कम आउट एंड बी सक्सेसफुल एंड यू कैन बी देर इज नो सच थिंग यू नो दैट that it is very difficult civil services all that is required is one year of preparation that's about it 
and one year of good preparation but don't you know have in both two boats you must be in one boat only if you prepare well don't think you know there are about 10 lakhs people who appear at the prelims but how many of them are serious not many are serious ultimately you know you get the mains and then from mains it becomes even even easier the most difficult part is the prelims which is a very dicey examination after that it's not so dicey and uh, now of course now you have almost all there is a level playing field also almost all papers are now compulsory barring one optional uh, so therefore take it as a challenge and you think that you have to get selected and civil services still offer the best opportunity in this country you know britishers have gone and britishers left many things to this country there are many people who say that britishers left this country high and dry maybe that may be true but at the same time britishers gave us so many good things so which are those things can anyone narrate civil service then railways common language unified country okay parliamentary democracy what huh enlightenment okay all right okay all right modern education legal system army army was given by vaccination was given by britishers survey of india was again given revenue system so these are all things which were given and lastly but not the least that which you have already said in the beginning civil service so civil service will continue to occupy the most important position in this country at least next 100 years take it from and don't think that civil service only means ias civil service all the services they are all important services whether it is indian revenue service indian police service audit and account service railway traffic service all are very good services and then you get so many opportunities so pick up get selected in one service and then prepare again take extraordinary leave for one year every now every service every department gives an extraordinary leave so you join take leave and appear if you want to upgrade your service though i don't uh, believe in the in the concept of upgrading all services are equal and everywhere you have promotion opportunities and audit and accounts uh, service officer also becomes uh, just short of cag he of he gets the, he gets the top most apex scale which is there in every other service also he gets the same opportunity same facility same perk and same uh, you know every kind of uh, leadership positions that you can think of so civil services uh, civil service is actually a service it's not a job it is a service and if you join the civil service thinking that it is a service then only you will be able to do justice to the service so civil services are different from other services primarily because of three four reasons why i am telling you in, in introducing this in between the ethics thing is because you understand what is the importance of civil service firstly it gives an opportunity at a very young age to occupy leadership positions you become a sub divisional magistrate in the ias at the age of 23 or 24 years after 5 years you become a uh, district magistrate or collector that is a very young age and you are literally acting as a leader for the entire district then you become higher position director head of the department secretary and so on so number one is it gives opportunity for occupying a leadership position at a very young age number two civil services actually give you an opportunity to be a part of the public policy making process so public policy you know what are public policy for example policies are for women for children for senior citizens public policy may be regarding foreign policy so all the policies which are named and you must be studying this in your polity and public administration that every political party when it comes to power it brings an election manifesto and that election manifesto is then converted in the form of public policies and public policy making process which is called the cycle problem identification agenda setting policy formulation policy legitimization policy implementation and policy evaluation that is the cycle so you at different levels of seniority 
you will be occupying different steps of the public policy cycle as collector you will be implementing when you become senior you will be making the policies formulation and so on so the second uh, reason civil services they are different from other services is that you it gives you an opportunity to be a part of the public policy making process number 3 it helps you in understanding the problems of the citizens of this country so you are a part of governance in this country and thereby you can touch the lives of the citizens of this country and the system of governance that we have today is called as citizen centric system of governance you know before 1947 the system of governance was called as colonial system of governance why why we were called a colonial system of governance ha huh. okay yeah yeah so we were a british colony so that is why the system of governance was called as colonial system of governance but after independence the system of governance is called as citizen centric system of governance where citizen is the focal point all the schemes made by the center and the state they are made with one single focus and that is the citizen of this country so the third reason why civil services play such an important part is that you can touch upon the lives of the people of this country you can do lot of good to others and thereby doing good to others you will be very ethical the fourth is it gives you lot many opportunities for creativity and innovation so you can do certain new things i was collector of chandigarh for 6 years and then home secretary for 4 years in this administration and we were able to introduce many new things so civil services have got that advantage that you can introduce new things creativity and innovation and see the results yourself within one or two years and that gives lot of satisfaction and solace to you prime minister also awards the civil servants at a function on the civil services day those who have done very good in introduce something new the best practices in this country so they they, they are all awarded so that again is a cause of great satisfaction so these are the 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 why civil services can be distinguished from other services this is not to be little the importance of any other service all services are very good they all are doing good for the society whether engineer or chief or, or architect or doctor everyone is doing it but civil services are slightly different they give a different kind of exposure and opportunity to each one of us so coming now back to this so i was telling you that civil servants play a very important part in conveying and spreading the message of ethics and values all over the country so when i took over as a collector of chandigarh the local member of parliament his name was jagannath kaushal now if you some of you are a resident of chandigarh then you would be knowing jagannath kaushal was a very noble man he he had been the law minister he was governor and he was also advocate general legal profession he was here so he came to me and he said ki dc sahab you know in, in this part of the country the collector is called as deputy commissioner dc which all of you can aspire to become uh, once you join civil service so he said dc sahab i am going to a place called mani majra mani majra is near chandigarh so why don't you come along with me it would give you an opportunity to meet the people of chandigarh so i readily agreed and i went along with him to mani majra and there we were sitting on the dais and he got up and he said bhaiyo aur behno ye aapke naye dc sahab hai and then he turned towards me and he said dc sahab you are a public servant and by virtue of being public servant you have power in the pen you know a public servant has power in the pen and that power you can use to do lot of good to the people of this country because you can take decisions on the file with that power in the pen you can change the lives of the people of this country and when you will change the lives of the people of this country by doing good to them they will give you blessings and those blessings will come free of cost you don't have to pay anything for getting those blessings rather the government is going to give you salary also for getting those blessings so he said it's a win win situation a public servant has power in the pen he can do lot of good to the others and when he does good he gets blessings and those blessings come free of cost rather the government compensates for salary also so he said try to be helpful to the others try to be ethical 
I never forgot that message and I tried to uh, imbibe those things inside me. And you know, the, the Prime Minister also when he addresses the civil servant, he always says that when you sign a file, if you rearrange the letters of the word file, what does it become? Life. So behind every file, there is a life, life of a citizen of this country. The same citizen which figures in the citizen centric administration. So if you take decision on the file, always think that behind this file, there is a life of a citizen. So try to be helpful to that particular citizen. So in the context of government servants, ethics and values become even more challenging. So much more challenging. Now, ethics and values, when we talk about, so the government schemes and programs which are implemented, formulated, they are implemented by the public servants. You will also become public servants one day. Now, public servant, when we talk about, can you tell me the definition of a public servant? Who is a public servant? Who works for the welfare of the citizen. Okay. He who works for the welfare of the citizen. Serves the citizen without expectations. Without expectations. Okay. So, uh, let me narrate to you again uh, an anecdote. So, there was a ICS officer. So, the name of the ICS officer was R.P. Naronha. So, R.P. Naronha, he was belonging to the Madhya Pradesh cadre. So, he was posted as collector of a district. So, that day he was posted, the local minister came up to him and he said, Narona sahab, I am going for a village visit. Why don't you come along with me for the village visit? So, he accompanied him and there on the dais, they were all both sitting. So, the minister got up and he said, Bhai or Bano, he is your new collector. He is collector. Hai. And then he turned towards him and he said, ki, uh, he is a public servant, you are the public and therefore he is your servant. You are the public, so he, he, they are, they, he is your servant. You can ask him to do anything and he will have to abide by it. It is just like that you have a domestic servant at home, in the same manner you can address this collector and he will have to comply with it. So Naroda was not amused. He said probably the minister does not understand the definition of a public servant. And Maybe because there is a difference in the selection process. A minister comes through the process of election, whereas all of you will come through the process of selection, through an examination and an interview. So, there is a huge difference. So, he said that minister probably is not aware of the definition of a public servant. So, he said, I must correct this wrong impression which has been made by the minister in the minds of the people. And he got up there. He said, Bhai or Bano. With all due respect to the minister, I am a public servant. There is no doubt about it. And I am there to serve you people. There is no doubt about that either. I am there to serve the citizen, the people, the public. But there is a difference. I serve the people by enforcing the rule of law. A public servant in, serves the public by enforcing rule of law. If I do not enforce rule of law, I will not be able to serve the public. So if you come with a demand, which is against law, I will not be able to do that. I have to follow the rule of law. And he said that just like a police constable, if he is standing on the rotary and regulating traffic, traffic constable, supposing he does not do anything, he just stands there and traffic is coming from all the sides. After some time, what will happen? There will be, yeah, there will be chaos, there will be total disorder. Everyone will start moving in the, in the without the rule of law. So, there will be a traffic jam. He said, I am that constable who removes that traffic jam, who enforces things through the rule of law. A public servant has to act as per the rule of law. And that is the difference. I serve the people by enforcing rule of law. And he said, the technical definition of a public servant is one who is paid out of public exchequer of this country. I get my salaries from the public exchequer. That is why I called a public servant. So, he explained this to the people and that is why sometimes, you know, we have a different definitions. Uh, people do not understand what is a public servant and he added, he said, I am a public servant, but I am not a servant of the public. Let it be very clear. I serve the people by a rule of law. Now, when we talk about the public servants, 
then I am also reminded of uh, the corporate world. Now, corporate world also, there is something called as corporate governance and ethics in the corporate governance also. Nowadays, for the last few years, we have been hearing so much about ethics and why not? Because there have been so many commissions and omissions by politicians, by public servants, by chairman, managing director, corporate leaders, by business houses and some of the commissions and omissions are the so-called uh, scams. You are all aware about it. You are all aware, aware about the 2G scam and the Commonwealth scam. There is a subject in your ethics paper, probity in governance, that will talk about all these things. So, this corporate governance is also so important. You have Harshad Mehta, you have Ketan Parikh, you have 2G, you have got Commonwealth, you have got uh, Beaufort and so on. Coal scam. So, this particular people have the public comes to know about it and it is highlighted in the media. So, public then forms an opinion about it. Just like public has, you are part of the right now, the, the citizenry and you also have an opinion about the public servants. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. So, public forms an opinion about it and a large number of times it is not a good opinion, it is a bad opinion. So, I am reminded of the the biggest, the most ethical corporate house in this country, which is that Tata. So, Tata's are regarded as the most ethical corporate companies. So, it was started by Jamshed Ji Tata and then JRD Tata who was awarded Bharat Ratna. The Air India was started by JRD Tata and now it is a homecoming for Air India. And the same footstep Ratan Tata has been following and Tata group of companies still regarded as the most ethical company and after Tata there are many others also for example Birla's, Wipro and so on. And then there are some other companies I would not like to name them but you are all aware about them who are on the other side of the spectrum, not so ethical. So JRD Tata in his office, he had a table and a chair and in that table there were two drawers, it was two drawers too. Both the drawers contained stationary items, A4 sheets, pencil, rubber, paper, eraser, scale, both the drawers had them. But there was a difference. The left drawer contained stationary items which he had purchased from his own bank account, savings bank, his own savings. And the right drawer contained stationary items which were purchased from the company's account. Never did he mix the two. If it was a personal thing work which is to be done. He would never use the stationary items purchased by the company. He would open the left drawer and he would do that. So ethical was he. He would never ring up his wife, you know, during office hours. Uh, only during lunch break he would ring her up. He would not use the landline telephone which was allotted by the company. He would use his own telephone. So he was so ethical. In the same way, I am reminded of another person. Because there are unethical people, but there are ethical people also. The country is running on the shoulders of such people who are ethical. So, the one person who is generally regarded as a person who is not very, very favorably mentioned in this country was Winston Churchill. But whatever you may say about Winston Churchill, he possessed great quality of ethics. So, Winston Churchill once went to France. And his wife accompanied him. So, in France, the, his wife carried out lot of purchasings. And when they came back to London and they landed at the airport. So, since he was the premier of the country, he was allowed to pass through the green channel. Nobody said anything. And when they came back home, Winston Churchill found that his wife had carried out lot of purchasing. And many of those items were leviable to customs duty, which was not paid. So, he rang up the customs authorities and jokingly said, uh, my wife is a smuggler. She has smuggled many items in this country. So, please send someone to collect the customs duty. So, ethical was he. There are many instances of ICS officers. You know what they used to do before retirement? After doing 35 years of service, they would deposit the last 3-4 months salary into the government exchequer. Why? They said, 
दैट ड्यूरिंग आवर थर्टी फाइव ईयर्स ऑफ सर्विस विटिंगली और अनविटिंगली जाने अनजाने में हमने कभी ना कभी गवर्नमेंट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर का सर्विस का दुरुपयोग किया होगा वी माइट है मिस यूज द व्हीकल द टेलीफोन द स्टेशनरी आइटम्स मेनी सच थिंग्स अनविटिंगली सो देयर फोर दे डिपॉजिटेड द फोर मंथ सैलरी सेइंग दैट दिस इज टू कॉम्पेंसेट फॉर द मिस यूज ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर सो दे आर सो एथिकल सो देयर आर अम्पटीन एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ एथिकल पीपल इन दिस कंट्री so let me uh, uh, now come to uh, the topic uh, in slightly more de greater details and that is about ethics and values context setting i was trying to set the context first of all that what ethics is and what values are and helping others you know is something which is the cardinal principle of ethics particularly for government service that is why you know in hindi there is a uh, there is a kahawat मानव में ही माधव है पीपल से दैट मानव में ही माधव है सो द सिटीजन इट सेल्फ इफ यू हेल्प द सिटीजन लाइक अबू बेन आदम यूज टू डू देन यू आर एक्चुअली कमिंग नियर टू द गॉड ओके सो यू नो इन रियल लाइफ यू नो देन द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ सोसाइटी इफ एवरी वन वॉज एथिकल देन प्रॉबेबली देर वॉज नो प्रॉब्लम सो द एवरी वन बींग एथिकल if everyone made ethical decisions and everyone had high integrity then there would be no need for any laws rules or regulations but what happens is that in spite of all these rules regulations people tend to be unethical and that is why you will never find an empty prison there are always people inside that prison for their unethical act so what happens is ideally one would like to run the society on the basis of ethics but since it does not happen so therefore many laws and regulations have to be framed and these are enforced by the public servants so uh, so the ethical behavior and having high integrity seems to play a very very big role you know in 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 controlling the behavior of the people as they act now law and ethics you know there is a very interesting relationship where law ends ethics starts something may be very very unlawful but it may be ethical and something may be lawful but may be unethical so let me give you an example supposing there is a speed limit that you should not drive your vehicle beyond 50 km per hour and if you drive more than 50 km per hour there is a penalty of 5000 rupees so someone says i am going to drive at the speed of 90 km per hour and i will pay the penalty of 5000 rupees that may be lawful but it is unethical because if you drive at the speed of 90 km per hour you are likely to hit someone on the road a pedestrian or someone whose life may be in danger so it is lawful but it is unethical take another example the other side something may be unlawful and yet it can be ethical now So there is a man he is very poor he does not have any money for the medicine his wife is on death bed she is about to die and he does not have money to purchase the medicine so he goes and steals the medicine stealing is unlawful but he is able to save his wife so it may be unlawful but it is ethical so ethics depends on the context situation and the need of the hour. there is no such thing which is black and white in ethics everything depends on the context we'll talk about it in a little while from now but ethics is something which is a necessary requirement for all of us so what are the values come back to the original thing the taxi driver henry he had that firm belief and conviction inside him which did not allow him to be dishonest before shiv kela so these are feelings and convictions regarding are you able to see that clearly regarding what is of strong worth or what is important to us in what we think say or do that is value it is something between you and the almighty which you have kind of an agreement it is an agreement you have made i will remain honest i will remain truthful i will be helpful so this is something which you have you should think strongly about that is called a value 
and these are the principles which are considered worthwhile or desirable and these are ideals and shared beliefs so those things which are important to us you know and valued by someone so this is individualistic value is individualistic personal now universal value out of those values there are many values which are called as universal values they will remain almost everywhere the same desh aur kal ke bawajood bhi chahe kisi jagah bhi chale jaiye pure vishv mein wo values hamesha wahi par rahengi love truth right conduct peace non violence these will remain everywhere everywhere there is a uniformity nobody will go against that that is called as universal so they stand alone self validated in their immunity everywhere they will remain the same they are also called as human values so universal values or human values they are the same thing so human values are universal values that span across cultures and nationalities and classes so values are many out of them there are certain values which are human values or uh, they are the, the the universal values so where do the values come from do you remember we talked about these things parents and teachers and uh, even technology teaches us trial and error religion peers and so on so what is ethics so a set of moral principles or values which govern the conduct this is important if you do not conduct don't use those values then they are not ethics you have to play those values in dealing with others ab wo honesty a principle apne andar driver bana ke rakha rehta lekin usne wo 11 dollar agar liya hota it would not be ethics kitne hi honest aap ho jao lekin agar aap use hi nahi karoge us honesty ko so therefore the conduct of an individual using those values in conducting yourself with other human beings then it becomes ethics so ethics is nothing but doing the right things in a situation of dilemma or conflict of interest to be able to choose the right path at all costs and lawful conduct may not always be an ethical conduct i gave you the example that driving the speed at the speed of 90 km in is lawful if you pay the penalty but it is unethical so in a cricket match between india and sri lanka randeep singh delivered a no ball to avoid the century of sehwag he no ball dal do taki uski century na bane it may be lawful but it was unethical okay so this is how in the gs4 paper you must come out don't read uh, too many intricacies about it you need to be very simple and come out with examples whenever you make any particular theoretical point come out with example and that is going to help you out in the gs4 paper so values and ethics is something which is understood by every one of us all you have to do is you you give out some good examples or anecdotes sometimes small anecdotes so ethics is a branch of philosophy so ethics is actually a branch of philosophy dealing with questions as to what ought to be done and what ought not to be done kya karna chahiye aur kya nahi karna chahiye so ethics is the study and philosophy of human conduct with emphasis on the determination of right and wrong but it is contextual as i said it depends on the context situation and the need of the hour what is right and what is wrong let me give you an example there is an aircraft the aircraft has 200 passengers on board it has been abducted hijacked by terrorists and they have diverted that aircraft towards a high rise building multi story building and that aircraft is going to strike that multi story building it has 200 passengers you are on the ground you are in charge of the anti aircraft gun you can fire on that aircraft and bring it down that multi story building has got 50000 people inside if that aircraft strikes that building those 50000 people may not survive a large number of them will die now if you fire that anti aircraft gun you will bring down those 200 people that aircraft will come down you will be able to save 50000 people but at the same time this 
will be at the cost of those 200 people whom you will be killing. So, this is a situation of ethical dilemma. Whether I should bring down that plane killing 200 people but saving 50,000 people or I abide by the principle that killing is unethical and let it strike the building killing those 50,000 people. Now, this is called an ethical dilemma. Many times in our lives also ethical dilemmas come. So, one ethical dilemma and now I will explain to you why which of the two actions was correct. First of all, tell me, will you bring down the plane? Yes. Why? No, because uh, those people on the plane could die. Because we cannot save them. We cannot uh, unhijack the plane. Because it has been hijacked, we can't do anything about it. But what we can do is we can save the people in the building. And we don't have time to evacuate the building. But we can bring down the plane. Which will uh, kill those people on the plane, but it will save the people who are in, in the building. Correct. So we, sh we should save, we should save those. Yeah. So now he has come out with the solution. Now let me tell you there are two approaches to this. So the, they are called the ethical approaches. One is called utilitarian principle. Now, those of you who might have studied GS4 paper in some detail, so once theory is called utilitarian principle which means that the ends justify the means. The ends ultimately justify the means. Here the end was to save 50,000 people. So, bringing down those 200 people, killing them, ultimately you will be saving 50,000 people. So, that is for the larger good. It is also called as the greatest good of the greatest number. Hmm? So, utilitarian people will argue that you should fire and bring down those that plane killing those 200 people but saving those 50,000 people and the support of that argument will be that those 200 people in any case they are going to be killed because they are going to strike the building. So, if you bring them down now you will be able to save 50,000 people. The second approach will be deontological. So, the second theory is called deontological which means which says no, no, no. Ends are not important, means are important. You will not murder those two, those 200 people. So, you will not fire anything even if it results in the death of those 50,000 people. So, both the kind of approaches, you know, go in, in government. Sometimes we follow a, a utilitarian principle, sometimes we follow a deontological principle. So, the, the ethics is, is a subject which is generally, as I said, it depends on the context situation and the need of the hour. And so, ethics is what ought to be done and what ought not to be done. And it is the basically study of the philosophy, uh, study of uh, study and philosophy of human conduct. The human conduct is the most important part with emphasis on right and wrong. So, ethics and integrity, when we talk about, so when we are talking about ethics and integrity, we are talking about uh, standards of behavior and conduct. So, ultimately it is the behavior and conduct which is the ethics. So, we talk about ethics and behavior, uh, the behavior and conduct of the citizens of this country, how everyone should behave and then ultimately it is also, you know, embedded in the culture and tradition of the organization. Tatas, they do not have, the attrition rate is not very high. In reliance, the attrition rate would be very high. Because Tatas have got the basic principles of ethics embedded in them. Nobody likes to leave. Tata administrative service is regarded as important as Indian administrative service. Very, very good service. So, what I am trying to say, ethics and integrity of an organization depends on ethics and integrity of the individuals who are manning that organization. So, when we talk about integrity, integrity is a very important value as one of you had already said. When I asked you about the different kind of values, what is integrity? Hmm? Yeah, the taxi driver had displayed honesty. What is integrity? Okay, yeah, partially you are right. Hmm? Ah, in any situation. So, integrity is sticking to your values even when no one is looking at you. Say what you do and do what you say. 
if they are you are driving a car at midnight and there is a traffic light and red light is there now ordinarily if there is no other person there and no policeman is in sight you will jump the red light now that is called as lack of integrity if you believe in law you should stop your vehicle and wait for the green light to come and then you proceed so saying what you do doing what you say you remaining true to your values even when no one is looking at you that is called integrity and integrity is also expressed in another interesting phase which is called as walk the talk what is walk the talk yeah kathni aur karni mein antar nahi hona chahiye whatever you talk you should walk if you have promised to do something say if you if you are working in a corporate office or in a government your boss says ki bhai ye file mere ko jo hai kal kitne baje de doge aap kahenge ki hame 11 baje tak de diye then you should stick to that that is integrity keeping your word that is integrity walk the talk that is integrity and integrity also means that if you are working in an organization if you are having integrity people will also emulate you people down below will also emulate you and you should be a good role model for your subordinates a role model has to possess integrity so i am reminded of a very interesting incident aap mein se bahut se logon ne mahabharat padhi hogi in mahabharat there is an anecdote so kunti the mother of pandavas once took arjun to guru dronacharya who was teaching them archery dhanur vidya sikha rahe the pandavo aur kaurava ko and kunti the mother of pandavas so she took arjun to to guru dronacharya and said gurudev arjun is very fond of jaggery and sweets isko gul aur chini bahut zyada pasand hai and gul aur chini jo hai swasth ke liye hanikarak hai it is bad for health he doesn't listen to me but you are his gurudev he will probably listen to you so tell him not to consume this so guru dronacharya said all right kunti come after a week so after one week kunti again to arjun to guru dronacharya and guru dronacharya called aside arjun and he said arjun don't consume jaggery and sweets ye swasth ke liye hanikarak hai kunti ko gussa aa gaya she became very angry he said gurudev ye baat aap ek hafta pehle bhi to keh sakte the you asked me to come after one week you could have said last week itself he said no i could not have said because i was myself very fond of jaggery and sweets how can i tell my subordinate to do a certain thing which i am myself not doing so for one full week i abstained from jaggery and sweets only then i became eligible to tell my subordinate don't consume jaggery and sweets this is what is called as integrity and besides integrity there are many other values i will talk about it in a little while from now by giving you specific instances of this so ethics and integrity it is common knowledge that all organizations uh, should actually maintain a value system and a culture like tata's does with integrity and the employees of those organization should also operate with integrity and that is why in the government also if every civil servant starts operating with integrity we would have a utopian country but that does not happen people tend to be unethical and i this question is often asked to me that why should we be ethical there are so many people who are unethical and they are prospering also so i i give them four reasons and i will tell you why we need to be ethical so we must act with high standards of ethical conduct to formulate sound policies so sound policies ultimately are for the benefit of the citizen of this country a public servant is expected to formulate sound policies and make sound decisions to so that people's confidence is not shaken people have lot of confidence bhavavash abhavavash prabhavavash to jab unka jo bhav hai wo shake ho jayega if they find that here is a public servant who is resorting to unethical activities so why uh, should we be ethical uh, this question is often asked me and i said that the first reason why the government servant needs to be ethical is that he is the role model he is the role model for his subordinate like the parents are the role model so he is also the role model. so whatever he does people will see him exactly and they will also do the same the second reason why we need to be ethical is that once you have chosen government service 
do you really have a choice of being unethical no because you are bound by conduct rules there are many people in spite of the conduct rules they tend to be unethical and they pay a price in the long run it may not come today but it may come after 15 years even after retirement so i tell the government servant don't think that you will not pay a price you will pay a price and it will be a permanent setback to you so don't be unethical it is not to say that ethical people don't pay a price ethical people sometimes also pay a price but that is temporary it remains for a small period then you come back hindi mein kahawat hai satya pareshan hota hai parajit nahi pareshan ho sakte hain thode din lekin parajit nahi that is the quality of being ethical and the third reason why we need to be ethical is that if you are ethical you have a very sound sleep a government servant who is ethical aaram ki neend soega and it is very necessary for you to have a sound sleep unethical person will always be at the midnight agar koi knock hogi na door par to kahi ed to nahi aa gayi kahi income tax to nahi aa gaya koi cbi to nahi aa gaya so i said why do you want to do that you should have a sound sleep you will don't be afraid of these enforcement agencies five which start with the letter c what are the five agencies in who actually regulate the probity in government cbc cbi what is the third one cag comptroller auditor general of india cic chief information commissioner and fifth uh, again is an agency which an unethical person is very afraid of that is courts high court supreme court and so on i was talking to one of group of participant and one of the participant raised his hand he said sir there is one more entity starting with the letter c and i am very afraid of that also i said what is that c i was curious he said sir cctv <laughs> so so people should actually if you are ethical you will have a sound sleep you don't have to worry about this. agencies and the fourth reason why we need to be ethical is this when you will ultimately go into your second innings what is the second inning after retirement too far ahead but then i'm just saying that when you will go to the second innings then looking back at your career it will give you a very very satisfying and pleasant feeling if you are remain ethical those who become unethical during their of you know service they have a miserable feeling after retirement because nobody respects them people respect you know out of two reason what are those two reasons one is called authority the second is called power please understand the difference between authority and power authority comes from the chair you sit on the chair the authority is there the moment chair is taken underneath the authority goes authority temporary hai it is dependent on whether you are in service or not and even within service depends on what post you are occupying so people will respect you even if you are dishonest if you are unethical because of that authority but it is temporary but the real power is called as p o w e r the real thing which needs to be earned is called power power is the sum total of two things one is called the value system which you possess and the second is the skills and competency 35 years of government service you will be able to earn so many good skills the working of government policy making even the skills like writing skills documentation skills presentation skills it skills conflict management skills these are all skills which we come to acquire through training so the power is equal to sum of value plus skills the more skills you possess the more values you possess the more power you will have power shashwat hai hamesha aapke sath rahega even after retirement so go after power rather than by authority and there are two types of people in this world one is called successful people and the other are called significant people successful people are those who take much more from the society and the organization but give back much less to the society and organization but significant people are those who take much less from the society but give back much more to the society so try to be significant people homi jahangir bhaba vikram sarabhai apj abdul kalam shri dharan these are all people who are significant people i don't know whether any one of you has seen the web series the rocket boys 
you have seen that okay so many of you so rocket boys if you have not seen how india rose in terms of atomic power and space that was shown uh, the lives of these people so these are the significant people they never hankered after success if you are significant success will automatically follow you you don't have to go after success and even you one leaves the world people remember because of the significance not because of the success success they can forget very quickly so coming back to this that uh, all organization must have people with integrity and ethics so values and ethics i was telling you that the play of values in this world is called ethics or when the values are in action in this world they are called ethics the three example i gave you that value between values are between me and the inner self inner self or almighty whatever you may call antaratma maine apne aap se ek vaada kar liya pran kar liya ki main honest hoonga that is the value so ethics is between me and others all stakeholder so when your command area increases beyond you and it encloses everyone your brother your sister your parents your grandparents and your workplace your schools colleges your teachers your colleagues your peer group then it is a ethical journey so you must expand beyond you from i to v that is required so when we lead a value based life then it is said that we are living ethic okay the best definition of ethical and unethical activity was explained by swami vivekananda and he said that anything that makes us whole is ethical you will be you part of your gs4 paper would be also the teachings and learnings of the people you know moral thinkers and philosophers of india and the world so vivekanand was regarded as so he said anything that makes us whole is ethical and anything that fragments us is unethical understand that what are the things that bring human beings closer to the other human being love compassion yes empathy sympathy pardon loyalty okay correct so these are all things which bring human beings closer to another they are ethical and what are those things which take us apart or fragment us what are those things jealousy hmm what is hatred jealousy hatred lying selfishness ego absolutely correct so these are the things which are unethical so this is how beautifully he explained anything that brings human beings closer to each other is ethical that fragments us is unethical now why ethics it is essential for improved accountability what is accountability answerability ownership okay so accountability is a very important value for a public servant civil servant and also in in any private organization also accountability is taking responsibility leading from the front like an army general you have to lead the team of people working under you not blaming others not blaming the circumstances that is accountability so apj abdul kalam was working in isro and uh, india space research organization he was a scientist there and he was made in charge of a satellite launch project the day the satellite was to be launched the computer said don't launch there is a flaw somewhere and it will be a failure but apj abdul kalam was so confident of his success that he overruled the computer and he launched the satellite satellite went up and fell into the bay of bengal it was a total disaster the entire country was up in gloom and he became so dejected and disappointed he went and met his boss what was his who was his boss hmm his boss name not many people remember that 
is called Satish Dhawan. Satish Dhawan, the ISRO is named after him. Also. So Satish Dhawan was his boss and a highly accountable man. So APJ Abdul Kalam went with great disappointment. And Satish Dhawan said, you don't have to worry. I am the director. I will own up the entire responsibility. You go and call the media. I am going to address the media. And the media was called. And then Satish Dhawan took the entire blame upon himself. And he said that whatever failure is attributable to me and not to anyone else. And then he said, six months down the line, we will launch another satellite. And this time there will be 100% thundering success. And then he reposed confidence in APJ Abdul Kalam. He was again made the, the satellite project director for the second time. And this time there was no mistake. The satellite was successful. The entire country was in jubilation. And this time APJ Abdul Kalam went to meet Satish Dhawan with great happiness and delight. And uh, Satish Dhawan said, this time I am not going to address the media. You will address the media. You will take the entire credit for it. And rest is history. APJ Abdul Kalam writes in his memoirs that I addressed the media and the entire success was showered upon me because of an accountable person who was my boss. When the failure came, the entire blame was taken over by him. And when the success came, the entire credit was passed on to me. This is the typical characteristic of an accountable person. All the civil servants, every one of us, whether we are in civil service or otherwise, we must own up the responsibility. If you are the elder brother or elder, uh, 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 elder son or elder daughter in your family, you have to own up the entire responsibility. The person who is at the helm of affairs, he or she must take up that responsibility. That is how it happens. Unfortunately, if the father passes away, the elder brother becomes like a father figure to the younger brother. Or if the mother passes away, unfortunately, the elder daughter becomes like a mother to the younger sister. So this is basically accountability. So it is why ethics to improve accountability for better governance. If you have ethical people, the governance would be better. What are the eight ingredients of good governance? Can anyone tell me? Transparency. Accountability, res responsibility, uh, there is no separate thing. It is res responsiveness, yes, responsive. So, accountability, transparency, responsiveness, what others? Hmm? Answerability and responsibility and accountability, actually they fall in the same category. Consensus building. What else? Hmm? Pardon? Integrity is good governance. Uh, integrity. Hmm? Awareness from the people. People's? People centered. Okay. So, so the eight ingredients as has been defined by the World Bank, which in any case you are going to study in the GS4 paper. The first thing is rule of law. That is the first thing, rule of law. Second is accountability. Third is transparency. Fourth is responsiveness. Then consensus building. Then participatory. Then inclusivity. And efficiency. So these are the eight ingredients of good governance. So accountability is one. Better governance, that is through good governance. For economical growth of an organization to enhance integrity and to minimize corruption. So when we will talk about corruption, then I am going to explain to you how corruption can be, you know, equated to something like fire. Just like fire requires three ingredients for building the fire. What do you require? Oxygen, spark and the fuel. Similarly, corruption also requires Three ingredients. So we'll talk about it when this, but if everyone is ethical, corruption automatically will come down. Because if the top man is ethical, the subordinates are also likely to be ethical. So ethical practices is don't do anything which is unbecoming of yourself as an employee, 
and be updated with relevant rules, regulations and procedure. So, knowledge is very important. There are three things which are important for you to be an able person. They are called KSA. What is KSA? Hmm? KSA. It is an acronym. What is the full form of KSA? Knowledge. Knowledge? Hmm? No. Knowledge? No. Similar. Something similar. Which I, which I, when I explained that power, besides value, what was the second thing? Skill. Skill. So, the next is knowledge, skills and third? Which one? Attitude. So, you will be talking about aptitude and attitude. So, KSA is knowledge, skills and attitudes. So, you must have a positive attitude, creative attitude and accountable. This is called as CAP. C-A-P. The attitude is made up of three things. Creativity, accountability and positivity. CAP. Every one of us must don a CAP when you enter a government service or otherwise. Creativity, while it is why it is important, because the world is changing so fast that you have to come out with new ideas. People's aspirations are rising. Earlier, when the railway ticket was to be purchased, you had to go to the railway station, stand in the queue, fill up a form, pay money in cash, get the ticket printed by the Ministry of Railways and then come back. All these things required two to three hours and then someone who was creative in the Ministry of Railways, he said, why can't I use ICT to make the life of the citizen of this country much more comfortable? Basically, the citizen, same citizen, citizen-centric administration. So, he used ICT and also used one more important thing, which is called as BPR. What is BPR? Anyone knowing? BPR. BPR is called Business Process Reengineering. The processes are changed. So, the process of getting a ticket was going to the railway station, standing in the queue, filling up a form, paying in cash. So, they said, why can't I change the process altogether? And this concept came from Ford Motor Car Company. So, the Ford, who was the president of Ford Motor Car Company, the payments to the suppliers, everyone was getting delayed because the process was very long. So, they complained. They said that, why can't you make it shortened? And then he introduced BPR. BPR is, is, was brought out by a person called Michael Hammer. If you find time, sometime you can go through BPR. Uh, coming back to this, creativity is very important in government service. And uh, creativity, I will like to quote one example. All of you are aware about the famous story of Cap Seller and the monkeys. Kya thi? Kya thi? What was that? Anyone? Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 Correct. So there was a cap seller, rightly pointed out, part of the story. So there was a cap seller, and he used to sell caps. One day he was going to another village to sell the caps. He had put the bundle, gathar jo tha, caps ka apne sir par rakha hua tha, and he was going towards the another village. On the way, he felt the urge to eat something. So, he had his grub, sat down under a tree and after that the wind was, breeze was blowing. So, he had a, wanted to have a siesta. So, he went to sleep and when he got up, he found that all the monkeys had come down from the branches and taken away all his caps. So, he remembered the old adage and saying that monkeys imitate. So, he wore a cap and he threw down the cap and all the monkeys seeing that wore a cap and threw down the cap and he collected the caps and he went ahead. But the story does not end here. After 40 years, his grandson who was also in the business of cap selling, he also put up the bundle of caps on his head and he was walking towards another village and he stopped on the way, had his food and then slept and when he got up, he found that all the caps had been taken away by the monkeys. 
सो ही रिमेंबर्ड हिज ग्रैंड फादर उसको अपने दादाजी की याद आई एंड दादाजी हैड सेड दैट दिस इज हाउ यू कैन गेट द कैप्स बैक सो ही वोर ए कैप एंड थ्रू डाउन द कैप बट नन ऑफ द मंकीज थ्रू डाउन द कैप सब पहने हुए वहीं बैठे रहे अपने किसी ने नहीं थ्रो करी एंड देन वन मंकी केम डाउन एंड ही विस्पर्ड इन इज ईयर क्या समझते हो तुम्हारे ही दादाजी थे हमारे भी तो दादाजी थे उन्होंने हमें सब बता दिया था अरे कुछ नया करते सब क्रिएटिविटी लाते तब तो हमको शायद बेकू बना लेते तुम तो वही फॉलो करते गए जो पहले होता गया दिस इज वॉट हैपन्स वी टेन टू एक्सेप्ट थिंग्स लाइंग डाउन वॉट एवर इज बिन गोइंग ऑन यस इट मस्ट बी द बेस्ट थिंग टू हैपन वी डोंट मेक इम्प्रूवमेंट इन द सिस्टम वर्ल्ड ओवर वेदर इट इज माइक्रोसॉफ्ट गूगल फेसबुक ट्विटर they encourage their employees they ask them to sit every fortnight in a big conference hall everyone is given time and brainstorming goes everyone is able to contribute new things of creativity and then they were are noted down by a dedicated group of people and then those are implemented this is how you have had facebook and twitter and whatsapp and instagram why haven't they come from india we have the best iits and iims and yet these things have traveled from abroad because they encourage creativity and innovation australia is a much smaller country as compared to india but the number of patents which are registered by australians is much more than what indians register so creativity is something which is very important k s a k is knowledge s is skill and third is attitude and attitude comprises of cap creativity accountability and positivity more about it we will we will we'll talk about it in the while so ethical practices is that uh, that don't do anything unbecoming be updated with the rules regulation knowledge don't be biased you should have equity in fact i'm going to tell you the four principles the four pillars of citizen centric administration that is equity means treating everyone alike you can't differentiate you have to follow rule of law the same thing which rp narona said that a public servant must follow the rule of law. don't be indecisive so decision making is very important now why i mention uh, this thing indecisiveness many of us in the public service they don't take decision and either because of the sometimes we feel that risks are too high why take a decision on the file sometimes it is our habit now a public expects the public servants to take quick decision now over a period of time what has come to become is that we have become treadmillers treadmill jante hain all of you must have ran on the treadmill gymnasium mein treadmill hoti hai you stand on the treadmill and you start running after 20 minutes of running how many this how much distance you actually move not even a single inch because it is stationary running you are not moving at all what has come to become of the public servants is that we have stopped taking decision we have become treadmiller so we toss the file here we toss file there we keep on sitting on the file so the that is regarded as one of the most unethical people ethics in the context of a government servant or even in a private sector it does not mean honesty only honesty and integrity are necessary but not sufficient condition you need to be efficient you need to be effective you need to perform you need to be contributing to productivity and you must deliver so that is more important honesty integrity necessary but not sufficient so we need to be efficient and you remember one of the eight ingredients of good governance was efficiency and effectiveness so let's not be indecisive let's not be a treadmiller we are better to jog and run outside rather than working on the treadmill and not taking any decision and many times you know i have observed that uh, people retire government servants and farewell party hoti hai i used to be there present because i was the head of the department or secretary and my, the person who is retiring he will say he will get up make a farewell speech hoti hai ki farewell speech he will say sir i have remained honest throughout my life why so say honesty se fayda kya agar aapne delivery nahi kiya hai aap rahiye honest koi decision mat lijiye what is the point of being honest you have to deliver so one of the most important thing is being delivered and one person will get up another person whom i was attending he will he said at the time of farewell during my 35 years of service not even a single complaint came against me complaint aayegi kaise agar aapne kaam hi nahi kiya to complaint to aayegi 
कंप्लेंट कम ओनली अगेंस्ट दोज पीपल हु डू सम वर्क जो करेगा ही नहीं काम उसके खिलाफ क्या कंप्लेंट आ रही है सो देर फोर प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड दैट इन ऑर्डर दैट यू आर एथिकल इट मीन्स दैट यू मस्ट टेक डिसीजन यू मस्ट बी एफिशियंट यू मस्ट बी इफेक्टिव ओनली देन यू विल बी ultimately responsible to the public because you are getting salary from the public exchequer and therefore you owe a responsibility to the public at large and that is why we are said that public servants need to be ethical uh areas of ethics there are many but there are mostly four types of areas of ethics and one is called meta ethics and meta ethics is about theoretical meaning and reference of moral we will talk about in greater detail today i don't want to expose you too much of the theoretical thing but just to uh, delineate meta ethics are uh, theoretical meaning and references of moral proposition and how their truth values may be determined so it's a theoretical concept the second is normative which means determining uh, you know the practical usage of the ethic the first is theory the second is practical usage how to use that thing third is descriptive ethics which is comparative ethics is the study of people's belief about morality samaj mein morality ke bare mein logo ka kya vishwas ab kha panchayat in haryana they say that people belonging to the same gotra should not get married so that is their understanding of morality so the third thing is descriptive ethics or hijab for that matter there can be many such things so that is in descriptive ethics and fourth is the applied ethics for example environmental ethics media ethics okay so these are uh, international ethics so these are applied branches of ethics and so therefore the first is the theoretical second is the practical third is people's opinion about morality and fourth is the application in different other fields so the following questions if i if i we ask would perhaps highlight it very easily. so meta ethics says what does right mean ki right kya hai right and wrong ki hum baat kar rahe hain what is right then normative ethics will say how should people act and applied ethics is how does one imbibe moral knowledge and put it into practice and descriptive ethics what is right according to the people so ethics seeks to resolve the you know the various questions arising out from human morality concept such as good and evil right and wrong virtue and vice justice and crime so ethics tell us what is correct what is wrong so integrity is the quality of having a sense of honesty and truthfulness in one's actions say what you do do what you say okay this is what i was saying so insist on integrity so insist on integrity is there is something which is called as belief but there is something called as behavior vishwas to aap karte hain bolte to aap sab kuch hai honest rehna chahiye agar aap khud honest nahi hai to behavior aur belief mein there is a difference space gap this gap is called integrity gap whatever you should say you should do katni aur karni mein fark na hona chahiye walk the talk this we i was telling you So this is the integrity gap. The belief and behavior should be the same thing, ideally. So matching our belief system to our actions, the external with the internal. बाहर से हम कैसे हैं और अंदर से कैसे हैं? There should be no difference. That is integrity. And integrity, you remember, I said, sticking to your values even when no one is looking looking at you. now organizational integrity means integrity of an organization is recognized from the integrity of the employees okay so how in what is the integrity of the employees that will determine the integrity of the organization and integrity actually improves transparency and fair practices so if people are in having integrity then automatically the transparency improves so one is related to the other and it enables in building the image of the organization like tata they have built that image you know vistara airlines tata they tried for several years to launch another airlines they were not granted the permission tata airlines was to come 
in conjunction with uh, Singapore Airlines. It was a joint venture. But Tata's did not believe in unethical practices. Probably some kind of message was conveyed to Tata to be unethical. They said nothing doing. I am not going to do anything which is unethical in order to get that license. Whether I get that license or not, I will not do that. So the, for him, the means were important. Ends were not important. And ultimately, after several years, you know, there was one rivalry which was there. Another airline was trying to put spokes into granting. And that airline ultimately vanished from the scene because of the unethical practices. And Tata got this star. So in the long run, you always are the winner. Satya Pareshan hota hai, Parajit nahi hota. That is precisely what happened. I have seen many civil servants. They have remained ethical. They might not have the best of the postings always. But in the end, they always are the winners. So accountability, we have already talked about being answerable or responsible. That is called as accountability. And the responsibility for one's own work and the result thereof and enables to view the organization as a system of individuals linked by mutuality and trust. So that is accountability. Everyone, you can fix targets for the individuals working under you. Everyone has to be accountable. But at the same time, you are accountable to the organization, like Satish Dhawan was. So it enables to take a personal and group responsibility to achieve the mission, vision, and uh, strategic position of the organization. What is the difference between vision and mission? So vision is the ultimate goal that you want to achieve. Hmm. And your uh, mission is like... Uh, yeah, go ahead. Mission is like you set yourself your goal. Okay, yeah, you are very near. Vision is something which is futuristic. After 10 years, where do I want to see the organization come to? That is the vision. Visions are given by the leaders, the CMDs, the prime minister. They are having a vision. Every organization has got a vision. Mission is what the organization is doing. It is in present sense. For example, if uh, uh, Cafe Coffee Day will say that the, the mission is to serve excellent coffee. That is the mission. The vision is to become number one in the entire world, you know, after 10 years time. That is the vision. Okay. So, there are four terms which are normally used. Vision, mission, objectives and goals. So, objective and goal come even later. They are quantifiable. So, so much of production, so much of profits and so on. They are the objectives and goals. Okay. So, uh, accountability enables to take a personal and group responsibility and vision, mission and strategic position. Now, these are the ethical principles in relation to public servants. I am giving you a bird eye view of the entire, practically the entire paper today. But separately, each one of them uh, would require one particular session. And uh, so, the number one is accountability. We have talked about accountability. A public officer you know, who holds the public office in public trust and personally responsible for his or her actions. The second is decency. Now, a public servant needs to be decent. He should be very, very sympathetic. He should have good manners, decent while talking to the public. Because public comes to us because of some abhav. Abhavavash, abhavavash, prabhavavash. So they should be decent. They should be Parliamentary, not unparliamentary. Many of the public servants are unparliamentary. Third, uh, so an officer is required to present himself or herself in a respectable manner in conformity with the morally accepted standards and values of the society. And you know, being decent, you can get so many things done. I, I remember I, I used to travel, uh, I still travel quite a lot uh, for delivering lectures. So, sometimes what happens because of too much of uh, paper which I have to carry and sometimes of course laptop everything. So, the, the, the weight uh, of the baggage becomes more than 20 kg. Uh, now, it is reduced to 15 kg now. Only. So, it used to exceed that. And uh, so, the, the lady sitting at the counter will say, sir, your this baggage has increased, you will have to pay the penalty. I never tried to, uh, you know, bulldoze. 
and uh, i said yes i i totally agree i see your point but uh, look i have come after delivering a lecture and there is lot of paper i had to carry with me and i am a quite a frequent traveler would you be kind enough to waive the penalty always it so happened without introducing myself just by good manners civility and decency you can get the things done i have seen getting difficult things done even just by speaking in a polite manner so the public servant is expected to be very polite to the stakeholders just like you are polite to other stakeholder in your family same way to the public because it is ultimately citizen centric third is diligence so the diligence means that a public officer should be careful and meticulous in the performance due diligence is a word which you must have heard any project needs to be examined with due diligence particularly when the financial decisions are to be taken you have to be very careful you have to see all the aspects and that will come only when you have a good knowledge of the rules the regulations so diligence that public money wherever it is involved you must take great care as if it is your own personal money in your savings bank account you know all finance books financial rules etc the first page first line says that treat public money as if it is your own money and take due diligence in spending that so due diligence is required fourth is discipline so the behavior of a public officer in conformity with the rules and regulation and conduct so one needs to be if supposing someone has to reach the office at 9 o'clock he should reach at 9 o'clock simple things attendance all these things are discipline if you don't reach in time i have seen many public servants who reach at 11 o'clock and then they sit till 11 o'clock and all their subordinates also keep on sitting because of that they don't pay attention to the fact that they are also having a family believe me if a person comes at right at 9 o'clock the office timing and leaves at 6 o'clock he will be able to get everything done and this is what i used to follow i never asked my office, subordinate officer to sit beyond office hour i will get up at 6 o'clock i'll say go back home look after your wife look after your children look after your mother so this is very necessary discipline in our life and discipline you know if the function is at 10 o'clock and if you reach after say 10 5 you are late if you reach at 10 o'clock even then you are late in order to be in time you should be before so that is the element cardinal principle we have in government that in order to be in time you should be before time. so the next thing is efficiency we have talked about efficiency that we must deliver don't be a treadmiller be efficient next is effectiveness that you should be able to produce result you see you can do lot of work lot of labor but if you don't produce result you are not effective you have to produce result and that is again a very important quality of a public servant then impartiality treat everyone alike you should not Uh, have nepotism or favoritism all those things and uh, then ethnicity gender race religion they should not come in between integrity we have already said conduct of public servant must be open honest sticking to the values even when no one is looking selflessness so selflessness is that your personal interest should be subservient to the public interest if there is a public interest involved and here is a personal interest personal interest should not matter public interest is more important because you are a public servant that is important and then transparency what is that law which was brought for transparency so right to information and right to information was brought out as a result of one group have you studied that hmm yeah so there was an ngo yes which actually was responsible they are called unofficial actors i do not know whether some of you have taken public administration or polity as your subject anyone okay so public policy is again a very important part a public servant is as i was telling you the civil service is different from other services because you are a part of the public policy making process so uh, transparency that you show your decision if you have to uh, if you have to purchase something procure something your uh, it should be totally transparent so that everyone gets an opportunity to bid and though that which is the l1 that should give the 
ultimate final allotment. And then of course, professionalism. You see, civil service makes us more or less generalist. Of course, there are specific services also. But in some area or the other, you should be specialist also. So try to develop professionalism in the next 35 years when you will join the civil service. So this principle is about adherence to the professional conduct and exhibiting high degree of competence and best practices. So professionalism, some area where you are extremely competent, you should be able to do that and take professional decisions. Don't depend too much only on the subordinates. Many people, senior officers, they don't have the knowledge. They will depend on their subordinates. This is what is called as unprofessional. The, the civil service that I said offers position of responsibility at a very young age. And therefore, a civil servant is, though he joins the civil, he or she joins the civil service at the age of 23, 24, 25. And yet, he should display the maturity of at least 20 years more than his age. So, you will become the managing director of a public sector undertaking at the age of 30 years. And in the private sector, the same position will be held by a person of 50 years. So that is why a public servant is, expect, is actually expected to display the maturity, take sound decision, professional decision, at least 20 years more than his or her age. So why training course on ethics? Well, this question is often asked and uh, Shiv Khela, you know, he's in the ethics are caught and they need not be taught. So why should we have a training course on ethics? Because it is found that psychologists have found that if you talk about ethics and values to your colleagues, to your subordinates, your peers regularly at regular intervals, it leaves an impact in public service. That is why in the all the services, you are taught about ethics and values at the induction level. When you join the service, then you are talking about ethics. In middle course, while you are in service, mid course training, Again, you are talking about ethics and so on. And there is a concept called mentoring. So the senior officer is expected to mentor just like the father and the mother mentor their children. Same with the senior officers are expected to mentor their subordinates. So that the ethics and values and professionalism is imbibed in them. So what happens is if an organization becomes ethical, it improves the morale of the employees and in, it also contributes to the profitability of the organization. Now, it is often easier to list the reasons for doing the wrong thing than choosing the right thing. Let me explain what I am trying to say. We do right things also and wrong things also. Sometimes we do right things, sometimes we do wrong things. When we do a wrong thing, we try to justify, isn't it? Reason number one, reason two, reason three. We will have to justify that. So, we know that we have done the wrong thing. So, we will justify that. But for doing the right thing, you don't have to justify it. Please see the third line. The only reason for doing the right thing is that it is the right thing. If you do the right thing, you don't have to explain. You don't have to justify. Everyone knows. Yes, it is the right thing. Only when you do a wrong thing, then you have to justify it. So, why do wrong things? And this is done. Uh, how to detect, how to find out? Mahatma Gandhi said this, that listen to your, what is that? Listen to your, what Mahatma Gandhi said? Conscience or inner voice. So listen to the conscience and listen to the inner voice. Because conscience or inner voice, antaratma ki awaz, aapko kabhi galap nahi batayegi. So whenever you have to take an important decision, particularly when there is an ethical dilemma which is involved, Always go to a corner and ask your conscience, is this the right thing or is it the wrong thing? They are, the conscience will always tell you the right thing. It is another matter that we sometimes overrule the conscience and take a wrong decision. So this is normally, how do we do that? You are going to enter ultimately the government service. And there is a procedure which we normally follow and that is called as CCD. Now CCD is the C is called connection. The second C is correction and third D is direction. Now, this means every day in the morning, get up, read some inspirational book, sit under a tree, listen to some music and start connecting with your inner self. I am not talking of any meditation, nothing like that. It is a simple exercise. Think about 
हाउ थिंग्स हैपेंड इन द लास्ट डे द प्रीवियस डे उससे पहले का तो याद नहीं होगा पिछले दिन का तो याद होगा सो स्टार्ट यू नो गोइंग थ्रू द इवेंट्स एज दे हैपन द प्रीवियस डे दैट इज पॉसिबल बाई कनेक्टिंग विथ योर इनर वर्ल्ड सो यू गो थ्रू द इवेंट से ट्वेंटी इवेंट्स यू है Half of them may be correct, half of them may be wrong. So about the correct thing, you don't have to worry. You have done the right thing. About the wrong things, you identify, and that is possible through connection. Once you identify them, then you go to the next step, which is called correction. So if you have done something wrong, if you if someone has beaten up his brother, or if someone has taken a bribe, then he must correct that. Correction can be done only when you recognize that it was a wrong. so that is come through the inner world or antara so the next step is correction to so go that day and correct and third is called direction future you will not do this so make a promise with yourself and that comes if you have those values with you so make a promise i am not going to do this in future so ccd is a very elementary process of doing the right things listening to the inner voice now simplistic moral advice uh, what time is it yes sir sir seven okay okay i'll try to hurry up quickly so moral values is the first thing every one of us must have moral values we must have integrity and we must have will power because zindagi mein pralobhan bahut aate hain you get so many particularly in government service and uh, you must have strong will power you know what happens in government service also people start with very simple thing of unethical they will send their children in their official cars and they will think yaar isme kya fark padta hai zara si baat hai but that's the beginning then they become more unethical then more unethical and so on so that is possible only when you have a strong will power so these are the three things now uh, as i was telling you organization may be very irrational where you are working you may be in a private company or you are in government service you will see many are irrational people unethical people surrounding you and therefore sometime that influences you and that is therefore necessary that you must have a strong will power only then you will be able to resist the temptation so practice the values which you have got and strengthen your will power that is the elementary principle when we talk about the value system one more value which i am going to uh, talk about is empathy now empathy we have talked about many a time but what is empathy first of all tell me yeah correct absolutely right so putting yourself in the position of another or put yourself in the shoes of another that's the way so rusi modi was the chairman of tata steel at jamshedpur a very ethical person a very empathetic person so rusi modi was addressing his workers in a football field in jamshedpur and after he had given the speech then he asked his workers do you have any question so one of the workers raised the hand and he said sir please pay a visit to our washroom so he paid the visit and he found that the washroom meant for the workers were dirty unclean never tidied up there was no soap there was no towel there was no odonil water was spilling dirty full of odor nobody could stand there for more than a minute and the worker said sir this is the washroom which we use every 2 minutes and sir please pay a visit to the washroom meant for the officers and the executives 10 yards away you had the washroom for the executives he paid a visit there also and he found it was spick and span cleaned up tidied up there was odonil there was soap beautiful taps no spilling of water very nice atmosphere and he said sir why this difference we also contribute towards productivity and so do these officers but this difference between us so rusi modi was very empathetic man he asked one of his executives how much time will you take to improve the condition of the washroom meant for the workers he said sir we will take about a month he said no one day he said no sir it's not possible he said it is possible he called the carpenter and he told the carpenter 
to switch the sign boards fixed outside the two washroom so the washroom for the executives became the washroom for the workers and the workers washroom became the washroom for the executives and now he said i have solved the problem 2 minutes isn't it now tell me how much time will you take to improve the condition of your newly acquired washroom so the executive said sir you will do it in one day this is exactly this is what is called as empathy have empathy for those people only then you will be able to take them along you will be called as really inclusive and that is one of the very important principles of good governance inclusivity so empathy is something which all public servants must possess putting yourself in the shoes of the citizen of this country what are the problems he or she is facing and that many the collectors many district magistrates many civil servants you have seen that uh, they have done exemplary work in improving the lives of the citizen of this country and that is an opportunity given by the civil service uh, so uh, it's already 7 o'clock so then i think uh, uh, we'll call it a day or if there are any questions you can ask me Hmm. Would be unethical for uh, might be unethical, but uh, it has no better Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, in this case, the utilitarian principle says the greatest good of the greatest number. In that example of aircraft, also you were killing those two hundred people without any fault, but you were able to save those fifty thousand people. So, sometimes your action may adversely affect the life of someone. but if it is for the common good then overall good is the answer so you are right the rule of law has to be maintained many times you cannot do certain things because they are against the law but then you are performing your duty because that is the responsibility thrust upon you many time what happen that if i am not able to help someone because of certain rule i try i try either to get some approval as a specific case to make an exception in that case but you have to follow the rule of law there is a procedure by which you can do that so sometime you if you do not do that then yes you feel that i have not been able to meet the requirement but at least the minimum thing that one a public servant must do is listen to the grievances hum mein se bahut log sunte hi nahi hai if you listen to the grievances of the people half the battle is done he would feel very happy ki meri baat samne suni to hai kam se kam काम सारे नहीं हो पाते ऑल वर्क करना यस सर या सो दैट इज द सिचुएशन ऑफ एथिकल डायलेमा एंड मेनी टाइम्स व्हाट हैपन इज दैट इफ यू डू द राइट थिंग यू मे बी सब्जेक्टेड टू सर्टेन थिंग लाइक transfer or some other kind of action but sticking to your value is the ultimate thing you see uh, if that thing is against any particular value of yours then start practicing that value even if it means that it may result into temporary setbacks temporary setback hoga government servant mein hona hi hona hai temporary setback one government will come and they will say that do this thing which may be totally wrong now you can do that if you do that you will have a permanent setback in a long run koi inquiry ho jayegi cbi inquiry or other inquiry therefore stick to the right thing you may be temporarily uh, having a setback but within a few years you will spring back and then your reputation will grow agar aapne ek galat kaam kar diya what happens is that people then politician particularly they start thinking you can get anything done from this person even if he is illegal so reputation is made or marred in the first 5 years of your service if you are accommodating doing the wrong thing accommodation does not mean doing the wrong thing you should accommodate but according to law but don't go outside the law anything which cannot be explained later on in an inquiry don't do that even if it results in a transfer because otherwise one may be doomed for all the rest of so this question this this kind of position will come many times that uh, uh with situations will come where you will be threatened with a transfer or disciplinary action also sometimes but stick to the values stick to the rule that is what i say 
and if you start your career with that you will find that no politician is going to tell you then a wrong thing they will say nahi usko nahi kahenge uska to reputation aisa hai he will not do a wrong thing so your reputation spreads like that any other question anyone would like to ask me yes sir uh ethics normally uh, relate to values which are possessed by individual morality is generally the social accepted norms they are set by the society but ethics is something which is individualistic so you will find the textbook sometime the opposite side also they will say that morality is uh, individualistic but no morality is set by the social order burqa pratha or hijab or khap panchayat that is morality as per that society norm but your individual values when you start practicing them then you are on an ethical path so ethical relates to you morality relates to the society morality norms may not always be your accepted norm you may or may not agree people खा पंचायत से इसकी नहीं दो गोत्र सेम गोत्र में नहीं मैरिज होंगे बट यू मे हैव अदर व्यू सो यू शुड नॉट कॉम्प्रोमाइज योर वैल्यू सिस्टम दैट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट मोरालिटी एंड मोरालिटी कीप्स ऑन चेंजिंग यू नो ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ टाइम समय के साथ ये चेंज होता चला जाता है यू नो वन नॉम टूडे मे नॉट बिकम रेलिवेंट आफ्टर ए फ्यू ईयर सो देर आर सिमिलर डिफरेंसेज एज यू राइटली आस्क there are difference between ethics and values ethics and morality aptitude and attitude so there are uh, fine differences between them uh, if i will be taking uh, one of your sessions i will also be talk devoting one session on uh, the differences also so normally uh, ethics requires about 40 to 50 sessions in which practically the entire course is covered the gs four and it is a very scoring paper you can do a lot in this and you don't have to Uh, study books i would not name the, those books there are big thick books also which are there on ethics and values gs4 paper which talk about the most intricate theories of ethics and the, you don't have to read simplistic what is commonly understood that is more important in your own words with giving examples that is important and if you do that you will be able to achieve much more for example and if i talk about leadership before i end leadership there is a harvard business school you know they came out with a beautiful uh, definition of leadership and leadership according to them means only three things are important one is called integrity the second is called authenticity the third is called having a bigger purpose mahatma gandhi was a leader martin luther king was a leader nelson mandela was a leader Vivekananda was a leader. They had a bigger purpose, which is much greater than your own purpose. So, if you explain leadership, you will explain by example of these things. Now, according to Harvard Business School, the first thing that is important for a leader is that he should have a bigger purpose. He or she should have a bigger purpose, not only your own personal purpose, but something bigger. Getting freedom for this country was a bigger purpose for Mahatma Gandhi. Similarly. Martin Luther King said he worked for the blacks and the bigger purpose was he said i have a dream Abraham Lincoln talked about what was that what is that thing which Abraham Lincoln look after hmm no slavery yes slavery so slavery so this is how the leader has have the bigger purpose. then second is integrity say what you do do what you say and the third is called authenticity a leader has to be authentic why i am explaining to you how to answer your questions in the gs4 paper now authenticity let me explain by example all of you must have heard about a tight rope walker tight rope walker kya hota hai in a circus or in a mela there are two poles which are erected and there is a rope in between and a person gets up a boy or a girl and with the help of a pole he balances himself or herself and walks from one end to the other end 
so the 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 biggest tight rope walker in the world he was charles blondin a man from france he used to commit many feats he would go up the top of a multi story building tie a rope and he will walk across the rope at height of about 100 feet to the other multi story building a very daring and risky act but he used to do that he was famous internationally one day he decided to walk across the niagara falls niagara falls has two ends united states canada so he said i am going to walk across a rope over the niagara falls 1500 feet in height anyone falling in that niagara falls would not survive lot many people gathered to see this feat and then he spoke he said do you think i will be able to walk across to the other side everyone said yes we believe in you you are authentic you will be able to do that and then he climbed on to the rope and walked across to the other side successfully everyone clapped and then now he said do you think i will be able to walk back to the other side on the same rope the the reverse journey so everyone said yes we believe in you you can do that you are authentic whatever word you say we totally believe in you and then he said do you think i will be able to walk across with another person sitting on my shoulders main apne kandhe par kisi ko bitha do to uske baad kya main walk karke ja sakta hu he said yes we believe that you can walk across with another person sitting on your shoulder he said who is that man come forward <laughs> there was pin drop silence but one man got up and he said i believe in you you are authentic I believe that you will be able to take me across safely to the other side. And he climbed onto the shoulders of Charles Blondin and walked across to the other side safely. This was an example of the total faith, blind faith he had in the leadership quality of Charles Blondin. And that is why Harvard Business School said authenticity is very important. That people should believe in what you do, and you should also have faith that you can do that. so that is equality of leadership so this is how the values and their explanations must be explained by examples in order to make your uh, answer much more effective it's a very interesting subject ethics and values and uh, as i said the more you read the examples the more educated you become and it everything ethics depends on the context and the situation but gs4 paper is a very interesting paper and there will be many case studies so normally i give many such case studies also uh, and give the solutions also how to solve these things so the ethical dilemmas the so on uh, almost 50% of the paper is devoted to that also okay so i'll end my presentation thank you so much it was wonderful interacting with all of you yes yes ma'am yes absolutely right every day your uh, the value system which you possess and how you use those values in day to day dealing with other stakeholder that is ultimately going to decide because then it will become a habit once you start using those values which you possess it will become a habit and involuntarily you will be doing the ethical things only for example if a friend of yours he is being chased by a murderer and the friend runs to you and he says please hide me in your house and you involuntarily you will hide him inside the house because you have the value to save the life and then that person will come the murderer who is chasing him and he will ask you whether that person is inside and even though you believe in truthfulness but here you will be saving the life so you will say no he is not there telling a lie ordinarily is unethical but in this context will become ethical so this is how the circumstances will decide and you have very rightly said that day to day nurturing your values and translating them into your actions is ultimately going to make you permanently an ethical person it will become your habits so that is what ultimately utopian 
society everyone should become so ethical okay thank you so much it was wonderful interacting with you Is there anyone who comes from the? Do we need to call any?